another Friday in the Gambia, uh, September 13, 2019. Um, um, as we are gathered here today, um, it is uh, humbling, uh, given the trajectory of the entire uh, procedure of this, uh, the, the circumstances leading to today's event, um, to have the Honorable Minister of Justice, the Honorable Bar Tambedu, uh, the Honorable Minister of Information and Communication Infrastructure, uh, the Honorable Ika Vasila, the Honorable Secretary General, Mohammed B. S. Jalo, and uh, our, our ladies and men of justice, and the entire press corps gathered here today to unveil the much-awaited Janet Commission report, a report that interrogates the alleged activities, uh, extra financial activities of former President Yame, his cronies, his enablers, parastatals, and whatever. Um, without much ado, uh, I would just yield back to the Secretary General, uh, who will give a brief statement on behalf of the President, and thereafter the Honorable Tambiru would proceed with the report and the white paper, and then from there we will have um, questions uh, from members of the press and answers from members of the high table as it were. And then, uh, however, um, I'd be remiss, really, if I proceed or yield over without making a very sobering comment. It is, it is quite um, shocking, to say the least, that um, the document, the report that we are about to unveil has actually been significantly leaked to the press corps, the online press corps. And last night, I had a sleepless night as I saw allegations and counter allegations from different parties, uh, insinuations as to who may have actually leaked this precious document that everybody was waiting for. Until these leaks were leaked, the only thing I know about it was what I put on Radio Gambia. That the forfeited landed properties would amount to close to a billion dollars. The sale from the cattle and other domestic articles was a hundred million dollars. I never saw the report. I never saw the white paper. Until I speak to you, I have not seen the white paper. I have not seen the report. Until as I sp I'm speaking, I haven't. So, so it is quite unfortunate that we have men and women among us in the civil service who are now bent on actually leaking every document before the document is due for public view. It's just unfortunate. And what comes with this is that people who have nothing, absolutely zero, to do with these leakings are, are maligned, insulted, you know, all kind of garbage, you know, being thrown at them, you know. But then this is a very serious matter, and so the Attorney General has his ways of dealing with it, and when he comes to the table, he'll talk about that. Mr. Jarl, you're welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sangare, the Honorable Attorney General, and Minister of Justice, the Honorable Minister of Communication, um, Information, and Communication Infrastructure, um, members of the press, you know, the members of the, the ministries uh, present here. Um, thank you very much, and uh, it's an honor to be present here in the launching of this this report. But first of all, let me just you know uh, make a short comment on the statement made by Mr. Sankara in terms of the leak from the from the civil service. I don't think. This government, I think um, everybody agrees that this government is very open as far as information is concerned. There is no interest to nozzle the press. Okay, that has been very clear. But I think at the same time, we have to understand that there are certain things which may have you know, some security risk as far as the state is concerned. That is why in all developed democracies, Every piece of information has different level of security. Certain things can be available 
to the public immediately. Other things have to be available, you know, after certain certain considerations uh, are made. Um, as regards this report, I think it was the prerogative of the president to set up this commission, and we thank the Minister of Justice and the commissioners for doing a diligent work. It is also His Excellency the President who decided, based on the powers given to him by the Constitution, you know, to, re um, to share this report publicly, because it is, felt that it is in the public interest that this report is shared. So that, I mean, nobody is saying that we are hiding anything. Okay, both the report and the white paper will be shared um, to, to, to the general public. Uh, like Mr. Sankara said, it's unfortunate that maybe some people have left it, but it is no secret that um, I think it was last, the last cabinet, it was discussed, and the public was informed that cabinet was discussing um, this, um, this report. <coughs> so on that note, I would like to thank once again the Honorable Attorney General and Minister of Justice and all the commissioners, you know, who spent weeks and months um, to and a lot of uh, investigative work to, to come up with this comprehensive report. Thank you very much. Good morning. I'll go straight to the details. You will recall that upon the installation of the Bauer administration in 2017, Preliminary reports received from, among other institutions, the Central Bank of the Gambia, the Social Security and Housing Finance Corporation, the Gambia Ports Authority, GAMTEL, NAWEC, AMRC, GNPC, and other public institutions and government agencies indicated that substantial funds were either directly or indirectly withdrawn, paid out, or expended on instructions or directives from received from the office of the president during the tenure in office of former President Jame, sometimes for unknown purposes. It was discovered that bank accounts were opened into which funds paid by members of the public and intended for the state were directly controlled and expended by former President Jame or on his instructions. It was also discovered that former President Jame during his tenure in office had accumulated at least 131 known landed properties registered in his name or in companies and foundations in which he had shares or an interest, and that he operated at least 89 private bank accounts directly or through the aforesaid companies or foundations. Based on these preliminary reports, His Excellency Adam Abau deemed it in the public interest to launch an inquiry into the financial and other activities of public bodies enterprises and offices as regards their dealings with former President Jame, his family members and close associates, his financial and business affairs, and the assets accumulated by them during his tenure in office. Accordingly, in exercise of the powers conferred on him by Section 200 of the Constitution of the Republic of the Gambia 1997 and the Commissions of Enquiry Act, Cap 30, Volume 5 of the Laws of the Gambia, His Excellency Adam Abau, President of the Republic of the Gambia, on 12 July 2017, issued a Commission of Enquiry into the financial and other related activities of certain public bodies, enterprises, and offices as regards their dealings with former President Jame and the accumulation of assets by him, his family members, and close associates, and for connected matters through Gazette Legal Notice Number 15 of 2017, 
issue number 0796 with the following membership. Ms. Swahata B.S. Jane as chairperson, Ms. Abiyose George as member, and Mr. Baima Sen as member. The commission was assisted by Council Ami Ben Suda, who was appointed by me. The members of the commission were thereafter sworn in, and the terms of reference of the commission included to inquire into and investigate the circumstances surrounding the withdrawal of diverse sums of money from the Central Bank of the Gambia, including from the International Gateway account, the Carnegie Mining Project account, and any other account or fund lodged with the Central Bank, to inquire into and investigate the involvement of the executive arm of government under former President Jame in the withdrawal and application of funds or resources of public bodies, enterprises, and offices, or projects, including but not limited to Social Security, GPA, GAMTEL, NAREC, AMRC, and GNPC, to inquire into whether and to what extent the resources meant for the government or people of the Gambia, including grants, donations, and loans, were diverted, converted, or misappropriated by or under the direction of the former executive. To investigate the extent to which former President Jame was involved in, pro in public procurement and whether any losses were caused to government by reason of such involvement, to investigate the existence, nature, extent, and method of acquisition of assets and properties of former President Jame, his family members, and close associates within the period from 22nd July 1994 to 21st January 2017, and to investigate whether such assets and properties were acquired lawfully or otherwise. To investigate the companies, businesses, and bank accounts operated directly or indirectly by former President Jame and his close associates or in which he had an interest, or in companies in which he had an interest. The Commission was also mandated to identify whether any person or group of persons committed any offence in relation to any matter inquired into by the Commission, and to recommend ways of improving on the supervision of government accounts in a bid to ensuring that irregular withdrawals from the said accounts do not reoccur, and to recommend ways of recovering or restoring any assets, monies, or other resources that may have been illegally taken, misappropriated, misapplied, or lost. The Commission submitted its report in nine volumes totaling 1,600 pages to the President on 29th March 2019. Following a review of the Commission's report, and in accordance with Section 203 of the 1997 Constitution, His Excellency President Bao has decided to publish his reaction to the report in the form of a white paper to be published here today together with the full report of the Commission. Because of its voluminous size, I'm afraid we can only share a few complimentary copies of the report with you here today <coughs> and encourage the general public and the rest of you to obtain copies from the GPPC in Carnific. It will be, of course, for sale. But first, the government wishes to highlight the commendable work of the Commission in general and the procedure that they adopted in their investigations and public hearings. The transparent manner in which the Commission conducted its proceedings and the extraordinary measures it had adopted in order to ensure fairness and adherence to law and due process is highly commendable. The Commission, therefore, has made a number of findings and recommendations 
in its report. The government has carefully considered the report and in its white paper has stated its decisions and accepts, except as otherwise stated in the white paper, the findings and recommendations as they relate to the issues brought out in the report. In taking the decisions reflected in the white paper, the government has not lost sight of the prevailing governance environment created by former President Jame at the time. Notwithstanding, in most cases, members of the business community in their dealings with former President Jame were motivated by greed and opportunism. While those who served in public office were mostly motivated by a combination of fear and self-preservation. The government has also taken into account the fact that the Gambia is going through, a currently going through a fragile political transition to democratic rule after over two decades of dictatorship. Consequently, the government's main objective, as reflected in the white paper, is the recovery of stolen of money stolen and or misappropriated from the state by former President Jame, his family members, and close associates. For the avoidance of doubt, the white paper does not and neither is it intended to reflect all the findings and recommendations of the Commission. It only contains the key findings and recommendations that the government wishes to highlight from the report and mirrors the findings and recommendations against the list of individuals identified in Volume 9 of the Commission's report. Some of the key findings of the Commission include the fact that former President Jame, who was the primary subject of the Commission's inquiry, and whose salary in July 1994, when he took over power, was a mere $2,744. The Commission found that former President Jame was engaged in an unconscionable land grab and acquired 281 landed properties throughout the country. These include private, residential, and commercial properties, islands, forest parks, wildlife reserves, and wetlands. The Commission also found that disproportionate amounts of resources were wasted, misappropriated, and diverted by former President Jame, amounting to at least over $1 billion, to be precise, $1 billion and $65 million, 304,718,000 United States dollars and 29 million euros, and over 29 million euros. The Commission found that the meager resources at the disposal of our country were managed at former President Jame's whims and caprices without regard to the structures and processes in place to ensure coherence and accountability. That former President Jame, from his actions, reserved the right to appropriate funds from wherever they were available to him for procurement of goods and services, and made no distinctions as to whether the project was for his personal benefit or for public purposes. That at least $3,300,000, United States dollars and other amounts in pound sterling, mostly in cash, were improperly authorized and directly transferred for use by Zainab Jame from various accounts in the country. The Commission found that former President Jame's financial dealings and all activities were at all stages facilitated, assisted, or even guided by a number of people. The Commission has identified 17 persons as close associates of former President Jame based 
on the evidence before it. These include military officers who left with him into exile, private individuals and companies that had business dealings with him either directly or indirectly through companies in which former President Jami had an interest. Apart from the persons who fall in the said category, the Commission also found that there were others who worked with former President Jame by virtue of the offices they held, many of whom were also involved in his financial dealings and or activities. The Commission underscored that the damage former President Jame has caused to government institutions, public resources, and state-owned enterprises is of such serious nature that the government ought to introduce a motion before the National Assembly for charges to be brought against him for theft, economic crimes, and corruption. Based on the recommendations of the Commission, the actions taken by the government are expected to generate at least a billion dollars from the assets forfeited to the state and to be sold. However, it should also be emphasized that the Commission was not only established for the recovery of monies, even though it was equally important that there was a credible and transparent process of accountability which provided the government with the legal and evidentiary basis for our recovery efforts. The Commission was also meant to expose the level of corruption and the extent of reckless disregard for fiscal discipline and safeguards against abuses. Therefore, the Commission has made a number of policy recommendations in order to improve on these safeguards. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, I wish to inform the general public that a lien has been placed on the properties of the following persons until further notice. Mr. Amaru Samba, Mr. Tariq Musa, Mr. Fadi Mazegi, Mr. Ilya Raymond, Mr. Martin Keller, Mr. Nikolai Bazenu, Mr. Dragos Bazenu, Mr. Ali Yusuf Shawara, Ms. Warren Yai Sise, Mr. Tony Gatas, Ms. Fayal Diab Ghanem, Trust Bank Limited, and Guaranteed Trust Bank Limited, and M.A. Harafi and Sons. I thank you all for your attention. We will share copies of the white paper with you, and as the government spokesperson said, unfortunately, we can only spare a few complimentary copies of the full report. It's voluminous. You can go to the GPPC and try to obtain it. I'll now cede the floor to the Honorable Minister of Information. Thank you all. Uh, Minister of Justice, Secretary General, Office of the President, the Government Spokesperson, Director of uh, Information, um, staff of the Ministry of uh, Justice, colleagues in the media, we want to thank you for attending this important press briefing. Um, as per the advice of the Attorney General, um, he would not like to uh, take questions because of legal ramifications, um, because uh, some of the issues that are mentioned in the report and the government white paper may be a subject of uh, appeal in the superior courts, and he has advised that uh, he would not like to take questions, list his comments may impact on any I mean, a matter that uh, this could be a subject of uh, litigation. Um, I think uh, this is uh, an important milestone for the government of the Gambia, having gone through an important process of investigation. And the actual report is now public. Um, the white paper will be distributed to the, to the press here, but the voluminous uh, investigative work of the commission, which is over 1,500 pages, will be handed over to the Gambia Press Union, three copies, and the GPU can now decide how it will be distributed to the rest of uh, the media. Maybe you can help them with the photocopies. 
or those that are eager to get their own complimentary copy can just go and uh, buy from uh, the Gambia Printing and Publishing Corporation. But uh, this is one important step of strengthening our governance and democratic process that citizens ought to know what is being done in their name. And now that the commission has finished its work and then the government accepted the report and published the white paper, we want to thank the commissioners, those who um, collaborated with them in investigating this uh, important piece of work, and also the Ministry of Justice for taking the important lead in ensuring that the work is uh, published and also, I mean, I made public. Uh, we also want to take the opportunity to thank the President for the courage that he has taken to uh, publicly make this report available to the members of the public through you, the media. And we also want to take this opportunity to thank the various media houses that participated in the investigation process, you know, in terms of your time and energy and resources by, you know, uh, playing the uh, different sessions on your different platforms. Some of them, you know, were aired live. It took a lot of resources and energy and time. I mean, time. And we want to thank you most profoundly for that. Uh, we are also very grateful to the um, Office of the Secretary General for the support uh, that I mean uh, they have always been given to the Commission and to the Attorney General's Office, most so the Ministry of Finance as well, for making the resources available to the Commission. On behalf of uh, the Honourable Minister, the Secretary General, and the Government Spokesperson, I want to thank you all. Sir, yeah. maybe you'll come here so that uh, the Attorney General will uh, you know, give you the complimentary copies. The three voluminous uh, reports, I mean... Uh, okay. okay, okay, yeah, the Secretary General will do that. But also just to emphasize once again that there is nothing hidden about what we have done here. The report is public. Please serialize it in your newspapers, or you can serialize it in your media houses, you know, radio, TV. I mean, it's public document. We have taken a position as government, and that is why the white paper is published. Uh, the report is also here. GPU will distribute this to its members. Um, so that's it. Thank you so much. Uh, the Honorable Secretary General would like to hand over the, re the, the report and the white paper to the Secretary General of the Gambia Press Union uh, for onward distribution. Yeah, the, 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 the president of the GPU. So you can see that is the, this is one, this is one report. It's about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine books. It's volumes. Yeah? So that's, that's, that's one copy of the report. So you can see how big it is. So that's, so that's one. And then we have three of these three that, uh, you know, you will have at uh, the Gambia Press Union and maybe you can help facilitate the photocopy or those that are eager to get the journal report itself you can have it. but for our position as government white paper we have made enough copies for all of you so that you can get it and then this is no i don't know the price but it's 1000 it's over 1600 pages of the journal report yeah you can find that out from the printing department but we are giving you this is for the journalists who are here today no, for this is for the GPU. No, this this is this is one volume. Okay, this is one report. Nine the volumes. White paper is here. You get the letter. Now, now you want to sell it and you want to give us the responsibility of photocopying, spending money. <laughs> uh, well, we'll give you three complimentary <laughs> copies of the report, so you can take that. Fair. I think to be fair, uh -huh. government is giving a complimentary copy. Yes. As you can yeah, see, sure. you know, I mean, even the cost of production is high. Yeah. That is why it's giving to the this is the white paper. Yeah. Okay. After, after so it's not just the journalists. For any any person in public who wants to have a copy, you go like all other documents. We cannot change a lot of things that happen in two decades, you know, in one year. All right. But let's let's accept that we are moving on the right direction. Yeah. All right. A lot of these things that are happening today has never happened. Exactly. All right. It has never happened in many countries. We have started some countries. But in many countries, even this does not happen.
So on behalf of His, his Excellency President, we now hand over this copy to, to the GP as a complimentary copy. So this other one, as you can see, is the white paper. Uh, we are going to give uh, three to the GPU also, but we'll give each of you a copy. This is, this is the position of the government, this white paper, and it entails everything that we as government has taken in recognition of the good work that the commission did. So it is our position and it is also public. You can serialize this as well as uh, the report I mean, are produced by the commissioners. Honorable Secretary General, can I have two copies two for the GPU? Copies. Two other copies for the yeah. GPU? Yes, okay, two, two, two. 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 No, I mean uh, for the white paper. Yeah. The white paper, yes. Okay, Sir, these are three copies for the GPU again. But each of you will give you a white paper, yeah? Okay. yeah. So, I How many are you here?